Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it great to be alive? Yes. I'm glad you said yes. Um, you have to do an intervention if you say no. Um, <clears throat> but it is good to be alive, especially alive in the Lord. And as we gather together to celebrate, to worship, to praise, to pray, and to listen, um, let us give thanks to the Lord for the life that he has given us and the life that he has promised us. Do we have any announcements this morning? Denise? <laughs> there are new upper rooms. There's some back here and this little thing on the um, table back here, and then there's some next door. So take one for yourself and take one for a friend. There's one. Thank you. <laughs> and what a great idea to give one to a friend and might be an opportunity to talk about your relationship with God and Jesus. Anyone else? I have a couple. Um, <clears throat> the Bible study on Tuesday, um, normally at 1 p.m., um, but I have to be in Highland at 2.30, so we're going to move the Bible study up to till noon this week. Um, so we'll still have it. It'll just be an hour early. Also, if you're planning on going on the uh, mission trip to Louisiana, um, do... Uh, encourage you to get your uh, application packet back to me. Um, there are a few things that have to be kind of administrative stuff like uh, acquiring insurance for the people who are going and making sure that everybody's registered in Louisiana. Um, it's not like it's got to be in this week, but um, the sooner you get it to me, the, the easier it'll be. Um, and we should also maybe think about in a couple weeks uh, having a little meeting right after church during fellowship to talk about where the, the planning is at at this point. And our uh, Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, well, I guess Christian in Christ is redundant, isn't it? Um, at uh, Bethel Presbyterian Church in Union Mills uh, are inviting us to a uh, evening of trivia called Two Great Hours of Trivia. It's on March 6th, that's a Sunday, from 2 to 4 p.m and they are charging $1 per person, and the proceeds go to One Great Hour of Sharing, which is an ecumenical ministry that uh, shares and helps people in need. Um, I don't know if any of you know Lois Wilfong from Union Mills, but uh, she gave me a little blurb here to read. So, uh, a team trivia contest will be Sunday, March 6th, from two to four at Union Mills Bethel Presbyterian Church. Bring a friend, dollar bills, and get ready for a good time. You don't have to be a genius to help your team win. All proceeds will go to one great hour of sharing. Here's a test question. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz is the tagline for what antacid? And she says, you can do it. Uh, snacks and drinks will be provided. Um, and uh, I have a uh, flyer that she gave me, so I'm going to make some copies and put it up in a couple of places. And um, there's a phone number here for Sean Popplewell, if you have any questions. And they do say that uh, you can actually buy clues and answers. So in addition to the dollar to enter, you can pay to win. So um, <laughs> that way one great hour, hour of sharing gets even more uh, available. Any other announcements? Okay, if not, let us open our worship with prayer. Living God, author of life, our Lord and our friend, our Father, our guide, our hope, and the ever-present comfort, we give you praise this morning. We thank you for this warm community. We thank you for the sun and the warming weather. We thank you for all of the ways, all of the gifts, all of the blessings that you bestow upon us. Help us, Lord, to enjoy the good things that you give to us. Help us to enjoy each other. Help us, most of all, to enjoy our relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill our hearts with your Spirit this morning as we worship. Lead our minds to praise and lead our lives to go out into the world 
celebrating your son, our relationship, and sharing it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now stand and sing our opening hymn, Hymn of Promise. <laughs> to us and reflect a moment on how what we give, not just in our plate, but how we give our hearts and our lives to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, but even to strangers and to our enemies. The gift of God can be spread far and wide, the life-giving gift of God. Pray, Lord, that these offerings might serve you, might share your word, might comfort the afflicted. We thank you, Lord, for your call on our lives that allows us to serve you, to love you, and to be your true children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us now share with one another our hearts, the things that we care about, our concerns, our hurts, our worries. But let us also share those life-giving things, the joys, the celebrations, 
the hopes and the victories. Does anyone have anything this morning? Yeah, I first wanted to thank for the prayers my dad put in uh, around the two months, or very deep, and was feeling really well. Thank you for the prayers. And then the uh, gentleman I work with is going through a difficult time with his family and her. her you know. Okay. Do we have a first name for him? Jeff. Jeff? Else. I ask for prayers for Percy. She's just under the weather today and having problems with her dizziness. Prayers for Purse. Certainly, uh, we miss her. That's, I was trying to think of some fancy way to say that, but we miss her. Um, okay. Yes, I talked to her yesterday, and um, she seemed to be doing pretty well and was hopeful, and her spirits were up, so. Arlene. Um, Landon's parents are traveling until free next weekend, and they're on a cruise leaving today. They're down in Florida currently, and I'm in charge of this, their household. So, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will keep you in our prayers. I lost Landon's boots yesterday in the soccer game, and I'm already off Well, and all I keep thinking is, I'm going to try working for it on a cruise. <laughs> I, think I, I, I believe the mothers in law should be gone and take the <laughs> Sure. Why not? Um, <clears throat> I believe the sons in laws should also, since my, my in laws are more likely to take a trip than I am. <clears throat> my watch is buzzing crazily at me, and I don't know why. Um, anyone else? Judy. My friend Linda passed away on Thursday, and I thank you for all the prayers for her over this past year. And also, I would like prayers for my brother, Jeff who is still uh, recovering from his uh, hospitalization. It was after Christmas, he had a heart attack, congestive heart failure, and pneumonia all at once. But he is doing better. Well, praise God for Jeff doing better, and yes. uh, our prayers and condolences on the loss of Linda. Thank you. Anyone else? Denise. Um, I have a friend, her name's Melissa. She's actually in the hospital. Um, her mom says she's pretty sick. She has an abscess in her appendix. So prayers for her. Okay, we will pray for Melissa. Anyone else? Bill. Uh, so Mr. Putin will back off from the Ukraine and behave himself. Yes, that will take a lot of prayer. Um, anyone else? Bo? Oh. Yeah, 29, my club member for the English Swimming Saturday from Mexico. The UK goes for shut down there, so please play the UK. Don't joke. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, God's blessings on the trip and all the work that you do there. Anyone else? Maureen? Um, for my nephew, Ryan Martin, he's in now with COVID, but he has cancer and his chemo and his radiation treatment is consistent. Okay. We will pray for Ryan, you said? Okay. That's, it's a difficult situation. You don't want either one, and then when one's stopping treatment of the other, it's hard. Else? I do want to lift up a joy. It's, uh, we've lifted it up before, but it's such a joy that even though our attendance today is relatively small, 
It's a joy that it was cut in half when the children left. You know, uh, such a such a blessing to have so many children and families that are uh, getting back involved. Uh, all right. If there's nothing else, then let us take these concerns and joys and the hidden things in our hearts to our Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we left, lift up to you the concerns of our hearts, the worries of our minds, those things that vex us, the things that we have no power to change. But we recognize and honor that you have the power. And we humbly ask that you use your power according to your wisdom. And that in all cases, that wholeness might be restored, that hope and community might be maintained, and that love might flow through, so that the broken will be made whole, so that the hurting will be comforted, so that the lost will be found. But we also, Lord, thank you for all of the things that we can celebrate all of the joys in our lives. Open our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts to fully experience all that you were doing in our lives and in our world. Help us, Lord, to recognize that your spirit has never left us, that you continue to work in this world through your provenient grace, to call all people into a right relationship with you and each other. And we acknowledge, Lord, that we often fall short. We often fail to see. So we give you thanks for the grace to forgive us for all of the ways that we do not live up to what you intend us to be. And we can make that assured make that assured statement that we know and trust that you do forgive us because of the life of your son Jesus Christ. The life given for us, but the life that you restored on the third day. So help us, Lord, to live into that life, that resurrected life, that we might not just have life forever in heaven, we might live more fully and completely now. So we gather our voices together in the confident assurance that we are indeed your children and brothers with your Son, Jesus Christ, and pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as Denise comes forward to uh, read the scriptures, let us prepare our minds and hearts to not only hear the words and comprehend them, but that they might touch our hearts and our lives. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 38 and 42 through 50. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. 
It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Please pray with me. Show us the way to life, Lord. Show us the life that you have already given, and help us to live into that life through the power of Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. So I think last week I had said that uh, we weren't going to talk about the scripture passage this week because I'd accidentally looked at it next week. Um, so no, we are talking about this. It's Death and Resurrection Part 2, sort of the, the title of the sermon, Raised in Glory. And it's always been kind of a, a unique pun in my life, because my mother's name was Gloria, but most people called her Glory. And I can tell you, it's not a criticism of mom, but mom did not live in glory. She was a worrier, a fretter. She was always concerned about how things could go wrong. And indeed, there's value in that because without a doubt, my sister and I were safe. Because mom saw everything that could go wrong and did everything she could to make sure that nothing ever went wrong. But you know, the truth is, lots of things still went wrong. And so my mom, Glory, didn't take many opportunities to experience glory in life. Like I said, I don't mean that as a criticism of my mom. It's just an observation. My mom, my dad, I mean, my sister, my dad and I, we all recognized it, that mom didn't experience all of the glory, all of the joy, the peace that God has promised to us here and now because she was so focused on what might happen. She was so focused on what she was afraid of that she missed a lot. The thing is, one or two of us might worry and fret to the degree that my mom did, but she was Olympic level worry. So um, most of us probably are just amateur worriers. And, well, Olympics are amateur. Most of us aren't at that level. In so many ways, we live totally in the natural world, the natural body. In so many ways, we accept that this life is going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be fraught with pain, and all of that is true. It's all completely true. That at best, what we can really hope for is the occasional moments of joy and the rest of the time being content. And there's nothing wrong with contentment. One of my favorite Far Side cartoons showed a bull and a cow living in a mansion. And the bull is sitting in a big easy chair, reading the Wall Street Times. And the cow is standing next to a window, looking wistfully out the window, holding a champagne glass, wearing pearls. And she says, Wendell, I'm not content. The very idea of a cow in a mansion, wearing pearls, not being content. 
But there was so much wisdom in that cartoon. Because the truth is, we're all a lot more like that cow than we would probably care to admit. We have the gift of God. We have a son, Jesus Christ. We have the spirit. We have the life that he has given us. And yet all too often, we get wistful about what's lacking, what's missing. I'm not saying that we have everything that we want. I'm not saying that things go our way. But what I am saying is all too often, people are kind of like Wendell's cow wife, not content with all of the blessings that God has given us. And the sad part about that, sorry, I, I saw, what's that red thing down there? It's a coffee cup. Of course, you're saying the carpet's red. It's a carpet, Jim. Pardon. <laughs> now I distracted myself and lost my control. <laughs> we go along and settle for a life of mere contentment. We hope for moments of happiness and joy. We do have those moments. But we also, probably like my mom, Lori, have moments where we get so wrapped up in what we perceive as the threats in the world and get so wrapped up in our own inability to have the power to fix them that most people in the world run and hide. And there are so many ways that people run and hide. They distract themselves from their powerlessness. And they do that through watching TV. They do it through reading you know, novels. There's nothing wrong with reading. There's nothing wrong with TV. But when it becomes a distraction, it keeps us from seeing the truth that surrounds us, the truth of God that surrounds us. It keeps us from seeing the angels who are in charge of us. It keeps us from seeing the glory of God and the presence of the Spirit. And some people hide in much more damaging ways. Alcohol, drugs, sex, fame, getting wrapped up in all the things of the world, which all need attention. The world needs attention. It needs our engagement. But I want you to ponder. Do you experience glory today? Because, yes, we're still in our perishable bodies. But we've already been given the life-giving spirit. We are both and. We are in between. We haven't been fully brought to new life in heaven, but we're also not just in this world. We can have it all. We really can have it all. In the history of Methodism, John Wesley warned the Methodists that his fear wasn't that we would seek to exist. His fear was that we would become a dry, dead sect, with no life, with no spirit, just going through the motions of our faith and making our faith all about us, all about me. I'm secure. My salvation's secure. But what about all those people who are still living in death? And the world doesn't want to hear our message. <clears throat> They want a nice religious expression that does no harm, that doesn't offend, that doesn't change anything. But if we are alive, we are a different force in the world. Talking about those early Methodists, when they would meet for their annual conferences back in England in the mid-1700s, the first thing they would do is they would sing the song, And Are We Yet Alive? And, and it was very practical for them because the early Methodist preachers were beaten, sometimes killed and murdered. Not often, not many were murdered. But it was a threat enough that when they gathered, 
they gave God praise, that they were still in this perishable body. Because there was much work to do, both in themselves, but much work to do in the world. And to this day, maybe not so much on Zoom annual conferences, but even to this day at annual conference, it's a tradition to sing, and are we yet alive? And I'll tell you, the United Methodist pastors and lay people at the Indiana conference don't generally have to fear for their life and limb for being Methodists anymore. But what they do have to fear is that we aren't alive. We aren't alive like we should be. We're kind of like the walking dead. Because we don't experience the glory of God every day. And I'll confess, I don't. I don't. I wake up in the morning and I grumble because I'm awake and I'm tired and I'm aching and sore. And then I go and sit down for a while and I distract myself by playing games. And then it's time to get to work. And I have to, all right, well, how am I going to preach this passage this week? And I wrestle with the scriptures for the message that I can give. But I will confess that most of the time I'm doing that, I don't stop and experience the scripture for myself. It's something I need to work on. It's become a task. It's become a, a job. And for most of us, most of the church, not just this church, the church, our faith has become something that we do, we believe it all the time really do it in part. We go through the motions and we believe, but do we expect glory in our lives today? Do we expect to celebrate the presence of God? Do we expect that God's promises will be true for us in this moment, right now, today? And I mean this as no criticism. But as I look out at you, I don't see any celebration. I don't see joy. I see, hmm, what is he talking about? Or, that's interesting. So I'm inviting you this week to live like you are alive. Find things to celebrate in life. Even in the midst of the difficulties and the trials, there is glory. God is with us. Christ has not only died for us, but been raised for us. The Holy Spirit dwells with us, and God is out there before us in the world, preparing the way. There are things to fret and worry about, but there is even more to celebrate, to have joy, and to experience the glory of God. Our faith is a faith of living. It's a faith of the life that the only thing that can sap it from us is our own contentment. Don't settle for being content. Seek the peace that passeth understanding. Seek the glory of God. It is here, it is with us, it is among us even now. There is so much to celebrate, so much to share. I pray that you and I will experience some glory this week. Let us look for it. And now let us give God our thanks. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You gave your life-giving spirit to Adam and to all who followed him that we might know and love you. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He showed us that the way to eternal life, the glorious way, is the way of love and mercy 
and celebration through the new birth in Christ. Yet his way was rejected, and he was shown no mercy, no love. So we pray, Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and lift us up in newness of life today, an eternal life at the last, and in a glorious life now and forever. Help us to live as Jesus lives, and to glory in the promises fulfilled in and through Jesus Christ. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us now rise and sing our final hymn, Come, Christians, Join to Sing. the kingdom of God in heaven is being in God's very presence. In Christ we know that God came to dwell among us and death did not defeat Christ and in God death does not defeat us. So I pray that as you go out and live your life this week that you live your life that you experience the joy of the presence of God and when you catch yourself feeling far from that, being wrapped up in the moment, we have a great gift that we can always stop, pray, and praise. So in all of those moments when we aren't experiencing glory, give God the glory, and God will give it to you. So go in the glorious name of the Father, in the joyful name of the Son, and in the powerful name of the Holy Spirit, and live in glory, joy, and power this week. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week.